what's up. So it's uh, car time again and today we're going to be rebuilding a rear caliper on the Audi S4 B5. Let's get started. First step is to get the wheel off. So this is part way jacked up. Um, we're going to need a 17mm socket, locking wheel nut, breaker bar, and the handbrake's on at the moment as well. So just loosen up the bolts. Check it up so it's completely off the floor. I've got a um, second jack here just for safety. Safety first, kids. And then uh, spin out the bolts. So the next thing we're going to want to do is try and get this caliper off. So um, first thing we're going to do is release the handbrake. And uh, then we've got two 13mm bolts here and here. And they're uh, they're bolted, they're bolted into a slider, uh, which has a 15 millimeter hex collar there. So what we can do is basically hold the collar with a 15 mil, and then undo it with the 13. Just like that. And the 15's there just to stop the uh, slider from spinning around. Okay, so there's uh, one bolt. And then we'll just try and uh, free this one up first. And then the slider bolt's spinning a little bit, so we're going to want to hold that in place with the 15mm open ended. That's it, second bolt. And you can see the sliders are still sliding, which is good. So, what we should be able to do now is just pull this caliper off. And then we've got the pads there, which I'm just going to remove and set down for the minute. Uh, we've got our slider bolts, uh, caliper mount, and uh, then we've got the actual caliper itself. So next step is to disengage this handbrake cable. Um, and undo the brake hose, hydraulic brake hose down here, so we can actually uh, remove this from the car and work on it separately. So a couple of things, I've just temporarily mounted it back on the sliders again, two reasons. One is I needed uh, to get some purchase on it so that I could undo the 14mm brake hose union on the bottom of this caliper, so I just cracked that off slightly. Um, quarter of a turn so it's loose. And the second thing is is that I need some purchase on this thing so I can release this handbrake cable. So um, what we're going to do down is push on the lever and then we're going to jam something in between the lever and uh, this little nylon bush here 
to basically hold it down. So we're just going to squeeze that by hand and we're going to make sure that we slide the caliper out a bit so that the piston doesn't hit. So we're going to push that down as far as we can, then jam a spanner in there. Um, so now the lever's compressed. And then what we can do is take some pliers, just move the head, the nipple of this uh, handbrake cable over, pull up, and then it's free now. So there you go, there's the handbrake um, cable freed up. And then if we look closely here, we can see a clip um, which we need to slide out. Okay, so with a little bit of gentle persuasion, i.e. some brake cleaner to see what the hell's going on. And uh, because it's so corroded, it's basically all turned into one thing and you can't see what's happening. But I've finally managed to get this clip off. I'm gonna need to uh, reshape it a little bit otherwise it won't go back in and because there's so much corrosion build up I think I'm going to need to take a file to this to uh, clean it up because it is uh, pretty bad you can see there this clip is actually meant to slide into that recess there but there was just so much corrosion it just all looked like one piece so it's actually quite hard to tell how that came off. Anyway, so um, now that we're at this stage, I think what we can do is uh, we'll just leave that spanner in there for the minute. We'll just take these 13 mil slider bolts out. And then what we should be able to do is uh, release this again because there's a stopper there so it's safe and then I should be able to just undo this caliper is we need to get this piston out um, this should have a protective boot on it that got ripped off a long time ago um, to stop it from holding moisture in against this piston you can see it's heavily corroded where the boot the lip of the boot should sit um, but I think what I want to do is uh, is get this piston out so I've got this piston rewind tool. Um, it handily comes in a uh, 38 as well so I can put it onto this ratchet here and then try and unwind this. bit of good news, the B6 rear caliper pistons are exactly the same, 38mm diameter, same length, uh, cutouts are all the same, um, so it looks like what I need to do next is transplant the internals of the old piston, which is uh, this um, shaft with lots of weird discs behind it and uh, transplant them into this new shiny shiny piston and then we'll see where we go from there so um here's the internals of the piston there's the circle clip on the top a couple of shims a uh, waveform washer an actual bearing as well which is um pretty nice and then um, stuck in the bottom there is the uh, 
um, the the threaded shaft. Um, which is actually um, just stuck in there with an o-ring but you can see little holes in this and um, I can only imagine that this is for regulating the handbrake um, somehow I'm not quite sure how this mechanism works it's a bit strange but um, what we need to do is transplant this into the new piston so that's what we're going to do next so just looking a bit more closely at this plunger here um, there's this o-ring and it looks like it's got a very particular shape um, just give that a wide pop so you guys can see so you can see it's not perfectly flat it's kind of narrow at the top and then it widens out kind of like a beveled edge and uh, inside the caliper rebuild kit there is this washer that also has that same form so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap over uh, I'm going to replace that old o-ring with this new one so um, All we want to do is try and replace that seal down there, which is uh, the one that's protecting the handbrake lever. So, this one here is looking a bit crispy. And to take apart the handbrake mechanism, according to the uh, page that I'm looking at on the internet, we need to compress this ring down because behind that there is a spring which you might be able to see compress there's a spring inside that housing um, and that housing is held down by this uh, circlip here and uh, if I undo that circlip everything's just going to rock it out of here and uh, so what we need to do is press this ring down to take the pressure off the spring and then undo that circlip and that looks like a really narrow gap to get down as well so um, let's see if we can do that uh, first thing I'm going to do is see if I can test fit some circlip pliers down there because if I don't um, If I don't have long enough circlip pliers that can get down there, then that's going to be a bit of a problem. So, it's an internal one. So it's going to be these ones, I guess. So that's a real pain because the caliper arms are actually causing these pliers to close up which means I can't actually get the width that I want. Um, so I think what I'm going to have to do is move that side clip round to this side so instead of it being here I need to move it round to here and then I can get some purchase on it. So let's do that. Things ain't going so well. I've uh, not only managed to crush my thumb to the point where it's actually bleeding from behind the nail somehow look at that that's not good um, but also I don't have a set of circlip pliers that can get down that gap so um, I've got this set up here to take the tension off that spring the handbrake spring um, but to get to that circlip that's right down there is um, near on impossible I don't know how the guy did it on the forums 
but that ain't happening for me today. So, um, I need to maybe look at getting some new circlip pliers. Um, but in the meantime, I think what we're going to do is uh, not change. Not change um, that handbrake seal because it's too dangerous and I don't want to mess around um, doing anything dodgy with that. I mean, I've already crushed my thumb, so uh, I don't want to take any risks, especially when it's a health and safety thing. So, um, I think for now, what we're going to have to do is uh, just put up with the fact that I won't be able to change that seal right there. Um, which is a damn shame because uh, there is actually a new one in the kit. Um, I'm not getting any, any problems with the handbrake sticking on and the mechanism feels um, nice and free at the moment as well. So I don't think there's any issues, like I don't think any corrosion's got past the seal. It would have just been nice while I've had the piston out to be able to change that. But hey, that's life, so um, I'm not going to risk it. It's too dangerous trying to take that circlip out without decompressing it. Um, so I think we just get on with um, cleaning this up, fitting a new piston seal in there and then uh, fitting a new dust boot in there and then getting it put all back together. So uh, cleaned out the surfaces where the seal was going to sit, put a little bit of castrol red grease in there. Uh, I've installed the main caliper seal. Here's the old one. Wasn't too bad shape. Uh, now it's time to put the piston dust boot on. This is the old one. And uh, this is the new one here. So uh, what we're going to do is um, install this. Now I think it needs to be installed first before we put the piston in so I'm just going to stretch this out a bit grease it up a little bit and then we're going to stick that in there well that was a real pain in the ass trying to get this dust boot on. I eventually figured out a way to do it, which is basically to slide the dust boot all the way down to the bottom on the piston first, and then try and put this stupid thing in. So um, I think it's all the way around now. I can start screwing this down. But yeah, that was a real pain in the ass. I must have spent the last 20 minutes, half an hour, messing around with different ways to get this in without damaging it so um, now it's time to to uh, screw this thing down onto its uh, threaded rod and uh, then I think it's uh, time to start putting stuff back together again so I'm winding this piston back down onto its uh, onto its rod, and I'm hoping that the lip of this piston goes into this dust boot. And if it does, it means we're good to go. So there we go. 
come on, just pop in there and then all will be good. There we go. Happy days. So I'm just going to get this wound all the way back down. Um, put the handbrake return spring back on on the back side of this thing. Um, and then we'll start putting it back on the car. Damn shame. So the first problem is these uh, slider boots are way too small for the bushings. And they're also a little bit too small even for the actual uh, slider pin themselves. So uh, I could probably get that to fit on there, but there's no way that's going on there. I've tried stretching it out. Um, it's not happening. So I think when I get some replacement slider bolts, the kits normally come with a boot as well. So it uh, looks like we're going to have to revisit this, uh, this rear brake at some point. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to have to use the crappy old ones. So we've got our fresh piston, dust boot, piston seal. Uh, we couldn't get to the handbrake mechanism to replace that little bush there, but by the looks of it, it doesn't look like it's too bad, so we're just going to have to, have to take that one on the chin. Um, so now it's time to put this caliper back on. So I'm going to take the little rubber bung off here. It's going to start wanting to piss out brake fluid. So we just screw this back on. So from an anti-squeal point of view, I like to use this stuff called Ceratec gel. It's basically like a grease for brake anti-squeal. Anti and you just put it on wherever the brake pads um, come in contact on the caliper carrier. And I'll put some on the surface of the piston here and also on the uh, opposing faces of the non moving side of the caliper. Um, and also, these pads have also had some of the gel ready. Um, from when I last looked at these calipers to see how bad they were. So all we've got to do is just place them back in. Same for this side. Just trying to wipe off some of the dirt. Put those in there. Like that. And then uh, we can slide our caliper on. So here we are, winding the caliper back in. And uh, Quite sure how far to go with this one, so I think we'll just leave it about there. Oh, dust boot seems to be sitting nicely, which is good. And now the caliper goes on. Let's just double check that the pads are aligned. Slide the guide pins in so we can get it past. Now there's some springs on the back of the pads which need to be overcome when trying to tighten up the caliper to the slide bolts so um all you can do this is just to just do the bottom one just kind of 
nip it up a little bit. Not fully tightened. And then you can push the top slide pin in. Apply some pressure to the caliper so that it compresses the springs on the back of the brake pads. And then you can try and align up your uh, your other caliper bolt. And you will need to finish these off. You will need the 15mm spanner again to hold the slider so that you can then do the bolt up properly. Just like that. Okay, I've wound it back quite far actually, a little bit too far, but never mind. So now the next thing to do is we need to bleed this brake. Okay, so to bleed our brakes we're going to be using this thing, which is basically a pressurised container full of brake fluid. And, uh, the way this works is uh, you attach it to your master cylinder and pump it up and this pressurizes the master cylinder with brake fluid and then you go around and you just undo your bleed valves, uh, your bleed nipples and then the pressure of the fluid in the master reservoir will basically force out fluid from wherever the bleed nipples are. Um, to get this to work properly though you need to get past this strainer and this thing is always a real ass to get out um, I'm pretty sure I'm taking it out wrong but the way this uh, I currently get it out is I just get a pair of pliers and I pull it out so you can see the edge is pretty mashed up I was sure there was a key way or something like that and I can see uh, there's a cut out there and but there's a lot more uh, locating tabs than there are cutouts so I was thinking maybe it needed to be rotated a certain way and pulled out but it's not the case it's a real ass to get this thing out anyway once you've got that thing out you can um, screw the adapter on so I'm just going to deliberately avoid the, uh, the float there. I think that floats like an anti-foaming float so I'm just going to go to the side of that and then screw this down. Okay. Doesn't have to be hella tight, just tight enough to hold air. Now what I do like to do now is I like to put a rag over this because um, the last time, well one of the times that I did this I actually had a really bad condition master cylinder that had cracks in it and uh, pressurising it made it rupture and it actually ended up spraying <laughs> a lot of brake fluid all over my windscreen um, I was at the back at the time and all I could hear was like a hissing noise and then I walk around to the front to be greeted with the horrifying sight of brake fluid being uh, sprayed all over the place. So just to mitigate any issues that might happen, put a cloth over it. Um, the brake fluid I'm using is DOT4. It is a little bit old, it's um, May 14th, but it's been in a sealed container 
and um, it doesn't look too brown so uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this moisture tester on it first before pumping it through pulled out some of the brake fluid from the now empty container into the cap just popped in to get battery for this thing it's okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to test it so just stick the probe in and it thinks it's good to go so even though the brake fluid's over three years old and car manuals do say you must change it every two years I think this stuff's okay to go and I need to test this um, tester as well just in case it's lying because it says it's zero percent so um, let's try it with uh, some water So I've got some soapy water here that I normally use to uh, detect leaks in my air ride system. So you spray some water in there, clean the tip off, and then if we turn it on, stick it in the liquid. So it's definitely working. This tester is not lying. There is zero percent fluid um, water sorry in uh, that brake fluid so I think I'm okay with that I think it's uh, good to Thanks. use this um, brake and clutch bleeding system uh, what we basically do is we pump it up PSI uh, doesn't look like the thing's exploded yet and then what we can do is just go around to the rear brake caliper and I've rigged up a bit of hose that slips onto the uh, bleed nipple this just goes into a container um, it's pretty tight fit in the uh, lid there so there's a little hole there to let air out and then all we're going to do is just undo this thing if we can actually find a uh, some flats to go on so just do that and then you can see the air bubbling out and then if we just wait for fluid to eventually pump out then um, we know we're getting somewhere I'm just wondering if I can open this up a bit more. So we need to do this because we emptied all the fluid out of the caliper when we changed the piston and that thing's just a big void of air at the moment. So there we go. Um, the fluid's actually flowing now. And you can see that slowly going around the, uh, the pipe there. It's easier to monitor. We just need to make sure that it's just fluid coming out and no air. So I can see some tiny air bubbles there. Like that. It looked like that pushed out some more air. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close that off. See what the brake feels like. I can hear the rear brake activating. Let's 
try the handbrake out. Yeah, that feels normal. So I think what we'll do is we will just try and bleed out a little bit more while we're set up. Make sure there's no air. Whoopsie daisy. So if I, uh, if I pull this tube up a bit, and then flick it round, So worryingly, so there we go. Like someone having a slow pee. Okay, so we're done bleeding. We've tightened the bleed nipple at the rear. So now what we need to do is depressurize this thing so we can detach it. So there's this little lever here, the uh, button you can press. To slowly depressurize. And you need to remember to do this because if you undo that cap while it's under pressure, you're gonna have some fun, fun problems to deal with. So now that's depressurized, we can take the rag off. Uh, and then we can unscrew here. And this particular system is really useful for me because I do a lot of stuff on my own. And the traditional method of uh, using a second person to pump the brake pedal as you alternate opening and closing the bleed nipples just not an option for me so that's that rear caliper rebuild not quite a full rebuild because i didn't get to do the uh, the handbrake component part of it but I'm going to look into that get some um, circlip pliers that might actually be able to get down into that gap um, but apart from that we've got new piston new piston seal new dust boot and um, I'm also going to need to look into those slide bolts as well see if we can get some new slide bolts and new boots because one of the boots has perished um, and then I've got to repeat the whole thing again for the other side which is going to be fun but it should be um, a lot quicker now that I've had a practice run on the left hand side. So um, that's it for me for now. Um, catch you on the next one.